today we're gonna to look at what I think is a really interesting way to prove a very classic result. And that is the closed form for the nth triangular number. And we're not gonna do this with induction. We're gonna use something called a combinatorial argument, which is where we take a certain set of objects and we count it two ways, and we show that those two ways give us the left-hand side of identity and a right-hand side of identity respectively. So let's recall the closed form of a triangular number before we get into it. It says that one plus two plus three ending at n is equal to n times n plus one over two. And in order to make our combinatorial argument, we will count subsets of a certain set. And so let's just recall the notation for that. So this binomial coefficient n choose k is defined to be the number of k element subsets of the set containing n elements one up to n. Now it need not contain these n elements, it can really contain any n elements, but we'll stick with these just to make it simplest. And I'd also like to point out that there are a number of different definitions of the binomial coefficient n choose k, but that being said, if n and k are natural numbers, they're all equivalent to this definition. So now let's look at an example where we take subsets of the set containing one, two, three, four. So in other words, when n is equal to four. So let's first start off with zero element subsets. So in other words, k would be equal to zero. So we're looking at four choose zero. And you might say, well, there aren't any zero element subsets, but in fact, Every set has a unique zero element subset, which is the empty set. So that's indeed a subset, which makes four choose zero equal to one because we have a single zero element subset. But now you might notice that I have a, a line above this, a row above this to fill in. And I'm gonna fill that in with negative values of K. So what about negative one, negative two, dot, dot, dot. Well, can we have subsets with a negative number of elements? Well, we can't. And so if we're looking at subsets of one, two, three, four with negative one elements, there are no such subsets. So here I'll just put none. There are no such subsets with a negative number of elements. So that makes four choose K in this case, zero. So four choose negative one is zero. Four choose negative two is zero, so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's go up to one element subsets. So that's the case when k is equal to one. Well, there's a really nice way to form one element subsets and, that just, and that's just by taking the singletons of the elements of the set. So since our set is the set containing one, two, three, four, we have singletons with one, two, three, or four. So that's gonna give us, like I said, the set containing one, two, three, and four. So those are our four subsets with one element. That makes four choose one equal to four. Now let's look at two element subsets. And in this case, we really just have to list them, maybe thinking of a systematic way to make sure we don't miss any. So let's start with two element subsets that contain one. So that would be one, two, that would be one, three, and that would be one, four. Those are all of the two element subsets that contain one. But what about the two element subsets that contain two? Well, we already have one, two, so we don't need that one. The next would be two, three, and two, four. Next up, we need the two element subsets that contain three. We already have this one, two, three, and one, three. So the only remaining one is three, four. Then we'd need the two element subsets that contain four, but all of those are already on the board. So that's gonna be all of the two element subsets of the set containing one, two, three, four. There are six such subsets. Okay, so now let's go to subsets with three elements. Well, there's a nice duality between subsets with three elements and subsets with one element. And you might know this by taking something called the complement. 
But we could also think of, think of it as building subsets, but defining those subsets not by what we're including, but what we're not including. So since three is one less than four, well, we can build a subset if we just don't include one, don't include two, three, or four. So that should give us four such subsets. So let's see. The subset that does not include one is the subset two, three, four. The subset that doesn't contain two is one, three, four. The subset without three is one, two, four. And finally, the subset without four is one, two, three. And that's all such subsets. Now, what about the case when k is equal to four? Well, there's very clearly only a single unique subset in this case, and this would be the entire set one, two, three, four. So that makes four choose four, one. Now, I don't have another row down here, but I'm gonna actually extend this further and look at the case when k is equal to five, six, seven, dot, dot, dot. Which means we're looking for subsets of the set containing one, two, three, four with five elements, or with six elements, or with seven elements. But there will be no such subsets. You can't have a subset which is larger than the parent set. So I'll put none here as well, and we've achieved a zero for four choose five, four choose six, four choose k, where k is strictly bigger than four. Okay, so hopefully this gives some intuition for dealing with subsets. Now we're going to find what I'll call maybe a closed form for this n choose k. So in order to get our result, we'll not only need this definition of binomial coefficients, but we'll also need a closed form, which we will establish. And that says for all natural numbers n and k, n choose k is equal to n times n minus one times n minus two down to n minus k plus one over k factorial. So the best way to think about this numerator is as the descending product of k terms starting with n. And in fact, k must be a natural number here in order to really establish its factorial, but n need not be a natural number. In fact, it could even be a complex number. Okay, so let's get into the proof. So let's start with our set one, two, up to n, and what we'd like to do is find the number of k permutations. And in fact, what we'd really like to do is figure out the number of k permutations a couple of different ways and then compare those ways. So let's maybe use the multiplicative principle in order to count the number of k permutations first of all. So what do I mean by a k permutation? That means a list of k terms where those k terms come from the set one to n. So here we've got k boxes to fill. And we fill in those boxes in order, and we fill in those boxes from elements from one to n. Okay, great. And now by the multiplicative principle, the number of total ways to do this will be the product of the number of ways to fill in this first box times the number of ways to fill in this second box, third box, down to the kth box. But let's notice that there are n ways to fill in this first box, given that we can fill it with any of these n numbers. But after we've used a number, there will only be n minus one ways to fill in this second box. So for instance, if we've put a four in this first box, then we're not allowed to use four anymore. So we can use every number from one to n except for four. And then continuing down, after filling in the first two boxes, the third box is filled in with n minus two terms, or n minus two possibilities for the same reason. All the way down to this final box, which has n minus k plus one possibilities. So putting this all together, we have indeed done exactly what we set out to do, and that is count the number of k permutations. So that number of k permutations of our set one, two, up to n is equal to n times n minus one, all the way down to n minus k plus one. Okay, nice. 
Now what I'd like to do is count the number of k permutations a different way. So let's start with our set one up to n, and let's have our first step be to make all k element subsets. So let's say that's what this yellow branching is doing. It's finding all k element subsets. So maybe this one right here we would call A1. That's a k element subset. This one right here is A2. This one right here is A3. And then this one right here is A n choose k. So we know there are n choose k choices. But now what we'll do is take permutations of all of the elements of each of these subsets. So let's branch all of those off by taking all possible permutations. And then so on and so forth all the way down. And this process will find all k permutations of one to n in a two-step factor. So that means what do we have? The number of k permutations of one, two, up to n is counted in this other way as a first choice, second choice counting procedure. So for our first choice, we have n choose k total possibilities. That's choosing the subset in choose k. In other words, choosing the numbers that are available in the first place for our permutation. And then after choosing the subset, what we'll do is find all permutations of the elements of that subset. But that's k permutations of a k element subset. That's exactly k factorial total permutations of the remaining subset. But now check it out. We've got an equation that we can build by equating these two expressions for the number of k permutations of 1 to n. We know that this descending product of n down to n minus k plus 1 is equal to n choose k times k factorial. So putting that all together, we get this nice closed form for our binomial coefficient. We're finally ready for our combinatorial proof of triangular numbers. So we've put a lot of work in in order to find this combinatorial argument, but I think maybe we can take a step back and see that the goal of this video was not really to arrive at this formula, but was to arrive at this formula with a nice strategy by filling in some details that you perhaps hadn't seen before. Okay, so anyway, now let's look at the proof of our main result. So I'll start with the right-hand side of this equation. So that's n times n plus 1 over 2. And what I'll do is visualize this as a binomial coefficient. This is pretty clearly equal to the binomial coefficient n plus 1 choose 2. We have a descending product of two terms starting at n plus 1 over 2 factorial. It just happens that 2 factorial is the same thing as 2. But notice this is exactly the number of two element subsets of the set containing one up to n plus one. So we can think about this fraction over here as being one way of counting this number of two element subsets. But now what I'll do is partition these two element subsets into a bunch of different categories and count each of those categories individually. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to the number of two element subsets where the smallest element is n. So that's definitely a possibility. So that would include the subset n and n plus one plus two element subsets whose smallest element is n minus one all the way down to the number of two element subsets whose smallest element is one. In other words, we can classify a two element subset by its smallest element. But now we can count up each of these like categories, if you will, of two element subsets fairly easily. So notice that there's a single two element subset whose smallest element is n, and that would be n and n plus one. It's because there's only one element that's larger than n. Then there are two two element subsets whose smallest element is n minus one. There's n minus one with n, 
and there's n minus one with n plus one. That's because there are two elements larger than n minus one. And then all the way up this last one, there are a bunch of two element subsets whose smallest element is one. So for instance, there's one with two, there's one with three, all the way up to one with n plus one. But how many are there in that case? Well, there's exactly n, because we're counting from two to n plus one. But we didn't fill in the details, but I think you could probably put an arbitrary one in the middle to write this down more carefully, but I don't think it's super necessary here because it's fairly obvious. What we have here is one from this classification, plus two from this, plus three from the one that comes after, all the way up to plus n from the last one. And then finally, comparing the extreme left-hand and right-hand side, we have our goal equation over here. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.